Hi guys, welcome back to 30 Days to Your First Website Design, a Tuts Plus Premium course. I'm Ian Yates and today we're going to jump into the Site Elements section of the series by looking at backgrounds and textures. Now before we open up Photoshop, let's take a quick look at what we're going to cover in this video. Well to kick things off, we're going to ask ourselves what we mean by backgrounds and textures and why we should pay attention to them. We'll then quickly examine how to go about building your own tessellating patterns in Photoshop. Then we'll kick off our design layout by grabbing some free pattern resources and building up our document. Lastly, as ever, there'll be an assignment for you before we tackle the next video in the series. Now, patterns and backgrounds fall under the whole theme and style category we discussed in an earlier video. They help a design gain character and define mood, hopefully in the process, helping to make the design memorable while not detracting from the main content. Flat colours work fine of course as backgrounds and we'll discuss in a minute how hierarchy can be aided by blocks of contrasting colour. But by using a subtle texture or pattern you're giving your design a sense of being tactile. Textures can be luxurious, add dimension, and the user will likely find it easier to connect with what he or she is looking at. Now let's examine our own layout. You'll hopefully have taken on board all we've talked about regarding wireframes, grids, conventions and the flow of information. Well, here's a quick mock-up of what I envisage our layout to be like. You can see we have a logo in the top left, then some persistent navigation top right. Underneath there's a section with testimonials to draw attention to what our company does. Underneath that there's a small feature section which we'll use to introduce our team. Under those three columns we have a two column section with contact information, a map and a contact form. Then finally we have the footer at the very bottom with some copyright information and social links. So we have quite a few distinct regions and it's important that we should visually clarify which sections relate to each other and which should be separate. We can use colour for this, contrasting areas of background colour which will instantly divide up our layout. We'll be visually determining the hierarchy, highlighting the most important sections and letting the less important regions dim slightly out of the spotlight. So let's do that then quickly and we'll use some blocks of colour. So we open up Photoshop here, there we go, and you can, as you can see I've prepared a, an empty 960 grid document which you'll be fairly familiar with by now I imagine. Uh, now firstly let's begin by choosing a limited range of swatches on which we can base our design. Now, often this decision will be dictated by the existing brand colours of your client but we're in the pleasant position of being able to do that ourselves. Now we've mentioned Adobe's cooler a while back and we discussed browsing it in your web browser but you can access it also through a number of Adobe applications uh, like in Photoshop for example by accessing your extensions and going to cooler. Now you can browse uh, a series of keywords I entered stylish in earlier and got all kinds of things uh, and once you've chosen one you can then edit away as so. I chose one for example as you can see uh, after I'd chosen my swatches I hit this to add them to my swatches palette and then you can see all five of them there neatly at the bottom. I'd actually edited this last colour which was previously a sort of cerise. So, so I've chosen there um, four base colours fairly similar uh, in tone and then uh, one last highlighting colour which we can use for things like our call to action button. So we'll begin by uh, just placing some shapes on our stage uh, in order to um, distinguish the regions. I'm going to bring up my guides as you can see I've put some guides in uh, which denote more or less the regions as dictated by the sketch. Uh, so we'll begin why, by putting our main content area down. Now that's absolutely everything apart from the footer actually. So we'll use that like that. That's way too dark but it does use one of the greens that's sampled in our palette. So I'm just going to double click that shape and bring the shade right down a very subtle off-white. Uh, then I'll just clarify the footer by adding that to the bottom here. Now obviously in a development uh, situation we'd be actually correctly naming the layers uh, in order to organize everything properly. So we'll sample our swatch at the top there making our footer a very contrasting dark emerald sort of color I suppose that is. Then we'll do a similar, similar shape for our contact area. 
although we want that much paler so I'm just going to reduce the opacity to 10% there we go now it's already um, working very effectively I'm just going to repeat the footer here and drag that all the way up to the top because I want to just frame the main area using the footer plus a small small trim at the very top above the logo and the main navigation now if I get rid of my guides and I hide the grid you'll see that that's all been achieved fairly effectively but what I can also do uh, is add patterns or textures by uh, soften and, and soften up all the aesthetics so how do we actually go about making our own pattern in Photoshop well we have to create our own tiles so let's start by opening up a new document 10 by 10 uh, 72 dpi now this is going to be our tile and that's what's going to tessellate across our area so I'm just going to zoom in on the tile so we can see it more clearly you can put whatever you like within the within the boundaries of this tile uh, as long as you bear in mind the simple rule that the sides left and right have to match up and the top and the bottom have to match up so we'll just put in a one pixel line straight across it like this very pale uh, you can see the anti-aliasing there in Photoshop taking effect we can correct that by highlighting our line and just bringing it directly into the pixel range there uh, now we'll duplicate that and hit command and T to transform it and then we'll rotate it uh, simply like that and once again I'm going to have to just alter that because it's all over the place there we go we'll bring that top and bottom and shift it over so that the pixel range is correct okay now that's going to tessellate perfectly as you can imagine if we zoom out it's very tiny but you can imagine that working on a large scale so now all we do is we go to edit and we define uh, pattern just like that we'll call that I don't know, scotch egg top of head okay now when we go back into our previous document we're going to select our main area and by double clicking that layer bringing up our layer style I can now go to overlay a pattern by browsing all the way to the bottom of my patterns you'll see here there's my scotch egg click OK if I just double click the uh, magnifying glass then to bring it up to actual pixels you see a perfectly tessellating pattern brilliant now, it's not to everybody's taste and it's probably a little intense so uh, what we're actually going to do now uh, is use one of the many free resources available on the web uh, we're going to close down uh, our document in Photoshop there and just open up the browser we're going to go to subtlepatterns.com brilliant free resource and it's uh, absolutely chocker with different patterns and textures now you can grab each one individually as a PNG file and the individual tile that we similar to what we just designed uh, or you can see as if you go all the way to the bottom of the page here you can download the Photoshop pattern file so if you download that as I have done and then decompress it double click it it will open up automatically in Photoshop so that when you go into your patterns dialog you'll see them all uh, nicely imported which begins there with a nice little logo pattern from you now I chose uh, in advance I chose one that had something to do with freckles if I remember correctly where is it uh, it was a pale one let's have a look here uh, thin straight white same come on where are you subtle freckles there we go and it is indeed a very subtle pattern but it fits in nicely with our palette as you can see and it's just softened up everything including the contact area uh, which is a darker version because that has a slightly transparent shape on top so I think we'll be very happy with that we've got there the flat color for the footer but that works fine so that's looking good so far okay now it's time for some further reading so if we jump back into the presentation here click on that there okay I'd like you to uh, take a look at one of the many tutorials and web design tuts which cover building your own patterns this one kicks off a series of several which breaks you in gently now before we jump into the next video I have an assignment for you I want you to mock up your own textured tile create it save it and use it in a layout to see how it fares as a pattern 
Next time on 30 days to your first website design, we're going to take a look at navigation and buttons. I'm Ian Yates, and from all of us here at Touch Plus, thanks for watching.